we have more than 200 registered participants from, well, I think it's between 10 and 20 countries. Uh, and uh, before we start, a few practical details. Uh, we are running this event as a webinar. That means that your microphone is muted by default. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A function uh, at the Zoom uh, button you see uh, on the screen. Uh, write your name and preferably also your affiliation to indicate that you have a question. And then in the Q&A part, I will run through the list asking you to present your question. When you are given uh, the virtual floor uh, for posting the question, uh, please uh, provide the question in a, a concise uh, manner. Our back office team will have to unmute your microphone and you, you yourself uh, do not need to do anything to unmute. Uh, I will also like to remind you all that this event will be recorded. Uh, for this event, we will focus on research infrastructures in the context of the new framework program. And to present this, we have been so lucky to have uh, Roberto Sobi uh, with us here today. She is deputy head of unit for the unit research and industrial infrastructures in DDRTT, in director GRNI outreach of RTT. Uh, she joined this unit in 2019, but she has a very long experience from DDRTD. Uh, before joining our, uh, this RNI unit, she worked in the Transport Research Directorate and in also in the Industrial Technologies and Materials Directorate. Most importantly for uh, today's event, she is in charge of the participation uh, preparation of the R uh, research and research infrastructure work program for Horizon Europe. Roberta will now give us uh, more insight and understanding on uh, the revised role, approaches and strategies for uh, RI in Horizon Europe. Uh, a quick note before I hand over the virtual floor to Roberta, the presentation will also be made available after the meeting, although in a slightly modified form. So without any further ado, Please, Roberta, we are looking forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning uh, to everybody. It's my pleasure to be, to be here. Um, I think I can uh, uh, show my screen. And uh, if you agree, I switch off my uh, video during the presentation because uh, probably the connection remains uh, more stable. Uh, now, uh, show the screen. Can you please confirm that you can see it? This is perfect. Okay, great. So my presentation is about uh, research infrastructure in Horizon Europe. Uh, as I said, it's, it's my pleasure to be here. It's one of the first presentation that we give about the program. So. Uh, this is almost a sort of uh, premiere or avant premiere, and here a caveat is uh, is uh, is uh, is necessary uh, because uh, neither the framework program, the Horizon Europe framework program, nor the different work programs uh, uh, have been adopted. So uh, there might be uh, some further changes to what I'm presenting. Uh, in, uh, in the next few months. Uh, the planning is to have them adopted uh, uh, during the month of April. And actually the first call will be issued immediately after. So this is a, a presentation based on uh, where we stand now. Uh, please consider that there are still some discussions ongoing in particular at the level of, of the different work programs uh, and of course of the infrastructure work program. So let me start with a, a, an overview of the political context. Uh, you know that uh, there is a new commission with uh, President von der Leyen and the framework program uh, and the different programs in Horizon Europe are very much uh, uh, based on the uh, policy priorities uh, uh, that have been set for this uh, new commission, which is not so new any longer. Uh, the uh, European Green Deal, uh, an economy that works for people, uh, the transition to a digital age, uh, the protection of our 
uh, way of life, uh, the, uh, let's say, role of Europe uh, uh, on, uh, in the world, uh, and of course, a strong push for the European de democracy. I'm making this, uh, let's say, introduction about the uh, policy framework uh, uh, because many of our activities uh, are, are uh, steered by these, uh, these priorities, including the new uh, European research area, the communication that was issued only a few months ago. Of course, the uh, European research area communication uh, takes a stock of uh, uh, all the success stories of the last 20 years and the research infrastructure are one uh, of, uh, of these success stories. Uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, 20 years, uh, uh, we uh, have been able to set up 37 uh, pan-European research infrastructure. There are uh, around 20 which are uh, under implementation. So it's uh, uh, research infrastructures can play a very important role in uh, uh, not only in the, in the in the past, but uh, also in 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 this uh, renewed uh, European research area. There are still uh, many areas for improvements. Uh, the three percent targets in many countries we are not yet there, and at European level we are not there. The uh, science divide uh, among the member states, the need for more ambitious policy reforms, the need to address the policy priorities that I was mentioning, and to make sure that what we do in uh, uh, research and innovation um, can provide a real, a real benefits for the economy and for the society. Gender remains a priority in what we do uh, in, uh, for research and, and, and innovation at European level. And of course, there is uh, the need uh, to better engage uh, citizens uh, in uh, um, science and technologies. These are the four priorities of uh, uh, the European research areas. I'm not going to present this complex uh, uh, slide with tools and outcomes suspected uh, but I will focus on the fourth priority, is which, here, which is deepening the era, because it is where research infrastructure can uh, play an important role. And actually, under objective four, there is a specific action uh, which, is, uh, uh, which uh, calls the research infrastructure to, pay, to play a key role, not only in relation to uh, improving the research infrastructure European ecosystems, but also uh, to have research infrastructure uh, steering and contributing to uh, the transition to uh, a greener economy, to a digital era, and also to address uh, um, major concerns uh, in relation to uh, public health. And then under action 10, also technology infrastructures are mentioned uh, because this is uh, something that uh, will be um, uh, implemented uh, in, in, in the near future uh, as uh, an important dimension of the uh, research infrastructure uh, and research and innovation ecosystem for Europe. And I will say a few words also on where we stand with the uh, technology infrastructures. I think we can go uh, to the core of this presentation. Uh, you all know uh, that when we speak about research infrastructures, uh, we refer to facilities uh, that are able to provide resources and services for the research community. Actually, they are seen as enablers uh, as, uh, uh, for research and innovation. And one of their key features uh, is the provision of access to uh, researchers uh, and external users. Now, research infrastructure can be knowledge-based facilities. They can be uh, major scientific equipments. So we have, for example, the uh, research vessels uh, or the telescopes, but also ICT infrastructures. In Horizon Europe, you will find the research infrastructure under uh, Pillar 1. Uh, the program will uh, have a budget of 2.4 uh, 
uh, millions uh, for the seven years uh, of, uh, of Horizon Europe. And of course, uh, one of the key features of Horizon Europe is to um, support synergies uh, between uh, the different pillars and between the different programs uh, uh, within the different pillars. This is why research infrastructure uh, play an important role also in uh, as enablers uh, of activities which are carried out uh, not only in pillar one but also in pillar two and pillar three. And I have to say that many of the work programs uh, uh, for the different clusters uh, in pillar two explicitly refers to research infrastructures uh, um, in one or the other or the other area. So opportunities to participate in the research infrastructure program are there, but there are also additional opportunities uh, to participate and to contribute uh, under the different uh, clusters of Pillar 2 and some activities also uh, in Pillar 3. The work program for research infrastructure uh, builds uh, on uh, uh, our specific program. Uh, and in the specific program, we had identified four intervention areas. The first area is, uh, is about uh, the uh, research infrastructure ecosystem in Europe. So uh, we need uh, to uh, consolidate and further develop this landscape and foresee activities aiming at uh, consolidating and developing the uh, research infrastructure ecosystem. There will be also activities supporting uh, the opening, the integration and the interconnection between the research infrastructures. There will be activities uh, uh, supporting the innovation potential of, uh, of our research infrastructures, but also supporting training of uh, uh, research infra infrastructure staff, but also of research infrastructure users. And then there is an important dimension, which is the uh, international cooperation dimension, but also the policies uh, for uh, reinforcing uh, uh, the research infrastructure uh, in Europe. The work program is based uh, on uh, uh, some strategic orientation covering uh, the next uh, four years. So the work program will be implemented and will cover the next two years, but actually, uh, the next two work programs uh, will uh, address uh, strategic orientations that have been agreed uh, uh, together with the member states. And this strategic orientation for 21-24, uh, and here I you know, repeat maybe the same concepts, uh, but uh, uh, the idea is to really consolidate and enhance the landscape. An important priority for us is uh, the uh, EOSC, so uh, uh, the uh, European Open Science Cloud, uh, its implementation and uh, um, uh, the, uh, let's say, support to its operational phase. Uh, we want the research infrastructure services. Uh, we want to put these services uh, at the service of uh, uh, the twin transition, but also at the service uh, of uh, health research in particular, because this is an important priority in this moment in time. At the same time, uh, we want to use the research infrastructures to push the limits of frontier research. So uh, curiosity-driven activities will, be, will uh, remain an important aspect of the, uh, of the activities uh, that we are going to support. We consider that it is important also to invest in uh, research infrastructure technologies uh, and in the work program 21-22, there are specific activities to support the technological development of, of research infrastructure in Europe. And of course, the international dimension is uh, an important aspect. And, and many of our activities uh, are open and, and will seek uh, uh, cooperation at international level. What uh, we do not do in, uh, in our program is uh, we are not supporting the construction of research infrastructure. This is a responsibility that remains in the end of, of the member states and also other countries. And actually there are uh, not only 
I mean, this, uh, the, the construction of research infrastructure is not only funded through national uh, budgets, uh, but there are also uh, opportunities uh, in relation to uh, structural funds uh, and also uh, in-kind contribution or uh, loans, uh, uh, for example, uh, via the European Investment uh, Bank. Main novelties uh, compared to uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, in Horizon 2020, the program was, uh, I would say, 100% uh, based on scientific uh, domains. So, so it was uh, very, very much uh, science driven. Uh, the new program in Horizon Europe uh, will be uh, much more uh, challenge driven. So the policy priorities have been embedded into uh, the activities uh, that will be implemented in the, in the new framework program. This doesn't mean that, uh, uh, let's say, the scientific uh, component is no longer there. Indeed, it is there, but we want our activities uh, to be oriented uh, in relation uh, to uh, specific policy priorities. Uh, compared to Horizon 2020, there is a stronger emphasis on the provision of services, and there is a strong emphasis on activities leading to uh, customization and integration of services. We are looking for higher level of integration uh, between uh, research infrastructures, and we are looking for the provision of services that really address uh, specific needs uh, and uh, uh, contribute to, uh, uh, to uh, address global challenges. For those uh, that are familiar with the uh, research infrastructure program, uh, maybe this is uh, not a very good news, uh, but the integrating activities that we have been implemented in Horizon 2020 uh, are discontinued. But this doesn't mean that the similar, I mean, the same type of activities uh, are no longer there. Actually, uh, in the new program, we have specific topics which will address the provision of access, uh, which will address the provision of services, and we have uh, specific topics addressing the uh, development of, uh, of uh, uh, new scientific instrumentation. In the past, these two families of, of activities were in, uh, in the integrating activities, uh, and, and these will no longer be, be there. So we'll, we, we have uh, uh, separated these two uh, different uh, activities. And then, of course, uh, there will be new efforts to consolidate uh, the existing landscape, and uh, uh, many of the activities that we have been carried out in the past uh, together with S3 uh, and to implement uh, uh, the uh, priorities which are set up by the member states in the context of S3 will be, uh, will be uh, continued. The work program, uh, uh, the research infrastructure work program in Horizon Europe is organized in five destinations. This is a new terminology. Uh, under each destination, you will find uh, uh, calls for proposals, uh, and within the different calls, you will find uh, the topics uh, that we want to uh, implement. Uh, so destination one is uh, about uh, the research infrastructure ecosystem. <coughs> and uh, uh, there is also an important aspect linked to international cooperation. So the simulation one is probably uh, the most policy, let's say, driven destination. Destination two is about EOSC. So uh, the different activities will uh, support uh, the uh, operations, uh, the implementation and the operation of, uh, of the European Open Science Cloud. Destination three, is about the provision of services. And here you will see two different families of services. One family addressing uh, challenge-driven uh, objectives and the other one addressing uh, curiosity-driven uh, research. Destination four is all about uh, the development of new scientific instrumentations. 
tools and methods, including uh, uh, new uh, digital solutions. And then the last destination, destination five, uh, is, uh, uh, will support the network connectivity, so the physical infrastructure, as it was uh, already the case in Horizon 2020. All in all, what we are discussing with, uh, uh, with the member states in, in the Research Infrastructure Committee uh, are not only the five destinations, uh, but also the 10 calls which are included in the five destinations. Six calls will be published in 2021 and four calls are foreseen in 2022. And these uh, 10 calls will uh, include 21 topics of which 22 will be published in, in 2021 and seven topics will be published in 2022. Uh, there are also other actions uh, like, for example, uh, public procurements, the fact that uh, we need external expertise as uh, reviewers, uh, evaluators, evaluator for the uh, ERICs. Uh, but here I would like to draw your attention to uh, the two uh, COVID-19 actions, uh, because these are two topics uh, that were included in uh, the normal, uh, let's say, uh, in the in, in the topics of, 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 of the normal course. But now with considering the urgency of the situation uh, uh, linked to the pandemic, uh, the uh, President von der Leyen asked all services in the Commission to accelerate as much as possible all activities addressing uh, the uh, COVID emergency. So two topics which are called actions will be published uh, in the next few weeks. And actually, as far as research infrastructure uh, are concerned, uh, we have a topic uh, under destination two. So in, uh, it's, a, it's a use case uh, for EOSC. And then we have another topic for the provision of research infrastructure services in the area of, uh, of infectious disease. Uh, and the idea is to uh, put a strong emphasis also on uh, uh, activities uh, addressing the uh, COVID variants. And this is the, re uh, the, reasons, the reason why these topics uh, will be uh, anticipated. But actually in terms of substance, uh, the content uh, uh, is, is very much uh, uh, the same uh, as what foreseen as if these were normal topics in the in the in the work program. The main difference is that uh, when uh, this topic uh, will be published and we do expect them to be published in the next few weeks, uh, the call will remain open only one month because of, uh, of the emergency. So it is important for the, uh, let's say, scientific community concerned uh, to be aware that uh, uh, these, uh, uh, to be aware of this acceleration concerning these activities. So back to the different destinations. Destination one, as I said, uh, is about uh, the uh, development of uh, a European strategy for research infrastructure. And this is uh, very much done together with the member states uh, in, the, in the S3. Uh, we want to announce the role of research infrastructure on the uh, global scale. And we want also to strengthen uh, the accessibility and the resilience of research infrastructure, in particular in relation of uh, uh, the situation uh, that we are facing uh, or that we have been facing in the last year. So destination one, there will be activities to support the development of new research infrastructure concept. This is, in, uh, let's say, uh, very similar to what uh, we did in Horizon 2020 under the uh, design studies. Uh, prepar preparatory phases for new research infrastructure is, uh, uh, I mean, there is strong continuity uh, with the preparatory phases of Horizon 2020, uh, supporting the implementation of uh, the priorities identified in the S3 roadmap. And we do expect a new roadmap uh, now in, uh, uh, in 2021, uh, so there will be uh, new research infrastructure uh, that will be 
uh, let's say that will be retained, that will uh, be labeled as S3 infrastructures uh, uh, and uh, that will be eligible for these preparatory phases. And then there will be uh, some activities uh, to uh, address uh, specific issues, either uh, at the level of individual research infrastructures, but also as groups of infrastructures uh, to, uh, let's say, address some difficulties uh, in the, let's say, life cycle uh, leading to the full operation of uh, our research infrastructure. So this is, uh, these are activities to consolidate, enhance, and uh, uh, increase the cost effective effectiveness of, of, uh, of the European research infrastructure ecosystem. Uh, support to ESFRI and in particular to the Secretariat uh, uh, is still there. Uh, and there will be under destination one uh, different topics uh, addressing the international cooperation, providing opportunities for international cooperation. And you will see that in 2021, we have specific activities uh, to support the cooperation with Africa. We will also continue supporting the uh, ICRI conferences uh, and the next one will be, uh, well, the next one is uh, uh, support is, is in 2021, but we have already foreseen a new one in 2022 under the Czech uh, presidency. And then there is uh, a specific activities uh, on uh, taking uh, uh, stock of, uh, uh, you know, how research infrastructures have reorganized themselves uh, uh, during uh, the pandemic. Uh, so there is a specific topic addressing uh, the uh, provision of digital and remote services by research infrastructure and try to draw some lessons and identify needs uh, to improve the provision of services uh, uh, of, of uh, remotely or, or uh, virtual services. Now, this is the list of topics that we have proposed uh, for the destination one for the World Program 2021-2022. And under destination one, you see that many of them are implemented as uh, uh, CSAs, so coordination and, and, and supporting activities. Uh, whilst uh, the ICRI conference uh, uh, and the S3 events uh, that will take place in 2021 will be implemented uh, as uh, um, identified beneficiaries. As I said, you will see many of the topics that uh, I mentioned uh, in, uh, before. Uh, there is uh, the uh, bilateral cooperation with uh, Africa and the focus of this topic is uh, on uh, uh, climate change. So also for the future, we expect that uh, uh, international cooperation activities will have a specific focus in one or another uh, scientific uh, uh, domain. Moving to destination two, destination two uh, is all about uh, EOSC. Actually, the objective is to really develop uh, a web of fair data and services for science. And the ambition is to uh, contribute transforming the way research data is shared and exploited by, uh, by the scientific communities. Uh, we want to support the multidisciplinarity. We want to uh, focus uh, in particular in uh, the areas uh, which coincide with the policy priorities of the Commission, such as environment and health. And of course, one important aspect is also to improve trust in science. Uh, and this is an activity that will be uh, carried out uh, in uh, destination two. So the priorities uh, uh, identified for uh, EOSC uh, uh, are, uh, you know, EOSC will be implemented in the form of uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, co-program uh, partnership. So the priorities are identified together with major stakeholders uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the context of, of the EOSC partnerships. And actually uh, there is a ZRIA, so a strategic research and innovation agenda where 
many of these priorities have been identified and many of these priorities will be implemented at European level, but not only. Uh, so, uh, an important aspect uh, is uh, uh, the development of the, need, the skills uh, which are needed uh, for uh, uh, open science practices. There are activities which are linked to EOS core and services, so uh, develop uh, the key functions uh, uh, to make sure that uh, uh, the EOS environment can become fully operational. There will be several use cases, thematic use cases, and you will see that in 2021, uh, some of them are already identified. And then there will be, of course, support to specific entities, as I said, the partnership, but also support to international standardization. And then here you can see the list of topics which are proposed for the work program 21-22. Uh, I'm not entering into all of them because, uh, uh, I mean, I've already uh, presented some of them. I would like to draw your attention to the use cases. As I said, one is uh, 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 to provide support to infectious diseases, and actually these will be uh, published uh, on the basis of Article 195, so uh, will be published in advance compared to the other topics. And then there is another one to support the mission on cancer, uh, so to enable activities which are covered by the mission on cancer. And the last one uh, is uh, on uh, uh, ocean and waters, again, is uh, uh, support to uh, the activities which are foreseen under uh, the mission, uh, the starfish mission. Moving to the next one, which is destination three. Destination three is all about the provision of research infrastructure, research infrastructure services. So provision of access uh, to research infrastructures. And actually, as I said, there will be a strong focus on health research, on the greening of our economy, and on the digital transformation. This doesn't mean that we will no longer cover some scientific domains uh, which, has, which are not closely linked with these policy priorities. We will continue doing this, but there is a much stronger focus on uh, these uh, three areas uh, of intervention. And this is how we, are, we have organized the, uh, let's say, two different families. Uh, so uh, the challenge-driven topics uh, will cover uh, health. We have three topics, as I said, one of uh, on infectious diseases, one addressing cancer, and the last one on e-brains. And then there, are, there is one topic to support uh, uh, research for a sustainable agriculture. Uh, there will be one topic uh, uh, covering uh, uh, climate change risks. There is one topic uh, uh, providing services uh, uh, in relation to sustainable materials. One topic in the socioeconomic uh, uh, sciences uh, with a focus on, on, on the global value chain. And finally, one topic uh, focusing on uh, uh, acquisition and better use of imaging data. Cons uh, concerning the curiosity-driven uh, uh, domains, uh, for 21, uh, we will uh, open three areas, one on geosphere, that will include uh, geohazards and, and, and georesources, another one in the area of biosphere, including uh, biodiversity, including Arctic and forest. And finally, the third one uh, with uh, uh, a focus on uh, uh, particle and nuclear physics. Now, other areas like astronomy, energy, but also uh, humanities uh, is not covered in 2021 and 2022. And this is because we still have several ongoing projects that can provide the services to uh, the research communities in, in these domains. 
and we do expect uh, to uh, cover these areas, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these domains uh, in the next uh, work program cycle, so in 2023 and 2024. These are the topics uh, that uh, all of them will be implemented uh, as a research and innovation uh, type of activities. Uh, with the also also the, the one that is anticipated uh, in in April uh, is uh, is area, uh, but as I said, it will be published uh, uh, in advance compared to all the other topics. Destination four is uh, where research infrastructure will uh, carry out uh, uh, research and innovation to develop uh, uh, new research infrastructure technologies. Uh, so here we will uh, look for new scientific instruments, new scientific tools and methods, and advanced digital solutions. Uh, actually, the focus here is uh, on uh, uh, research infrastructure technologies uh, that can improve the provision of services and that can uh, keep uh, our research infrastructure, our European research infrastructure, at the cutting edge of uh, uh, the technologies. Uh, we have two topics. Uh, one, the focus is on, on the scientific instrumentation. It will be completely bottom up, so we don't set priorities. It will be to the research infrastructure uh, themselves when preparing their proposal uh, to uh, show the transformative potential of uh, the new instrumentation across different domains, uh, that the new scientific instrumentation will serve wider communities of potential users, and or that uh, it can open new areas uh, of research. So we are not looking for a minor incremental improvement, we are looking for a uh, new instrumentation that can really have an impact uh, on, uh, on science, uh, on research and, and, sci and scientific activities. And then the second topic is on the development of uh, digital twins uh, to address, uh, uh, I mean, uh, complex, very complex phenomena and uh, uh, support uh, advancement uh, in, in scientific discoveries. As I said, two topics. Uh, we uh, expect, uh, uh, let's say, important uh, in terms of budget, uh, important amount uh, to be allocated to these activities. Uh, actually, destination three and destination four are the two destinations where uh, the uh, large bulk of our budget will be uh, will be allocated, and uh, uh, when I say an important share of the budget, uh, uh, I uh, I refer to uh, I mean an order of magnitude of uh, hundred million per uh, destination. Finally, destination five is the, let's say, physical infrastructure, so uh, underpinning uh, network connectivity. Actually, is, uh, it will uh, uh, bring forward uh, what was done in, uh, in Horizon 2020 is, uh, is uh, Geont. Uh, and actually, uh, activities under this destination will support uh, the uh, network capacity to really enable the cooperation uh, at international level of, uh, uh, of uh, virtual communities. It will be activities under destination five that will be implemented through what we call the framework partnership agreement uh, and through a specific grant agreement uh, because this is something that uh, uh, I mean, will be implemented via uh, in the form of public procurements. And here are the activities that are foreseen in uh, 2021 and uh, 2022. Few words uh, on uh, um, technology infrastructure. This is a novelty. Uh, I mean, technology infrastructure are very similar to research infrastructure and the definition that has been, uh, let's say, uh, 
provided in the context of the Commission start working document on technology infrastructure of last year, uh, uh, defy, of, of two years ago, of April 2019, uh, identify, um, uh, I mean, define technology infrastructure size infrastructures addressing higher uh, technology readiness levels. So providing um, uh, services to users, which are mainly industrial uh, players, uh, to uh, at higher uh, tier, uh, tier ends. For the time being, uh, there are some activities which are implemented in uh, uh, the clusters, uh, uh, so in Pillar 2, in particular under uh, the industrial cluster and the energy cluster. Uh, but actually, what we will do in the next, uh, in the near future, is to develop a governance structure for the technology infrastructures. And actually, what we have been done for research infrastructure can provide uh, lessons uh, to have an effective uh, uh, governance for technology infrastructures. Uh, we want to develop an effective uh, uh, technology infrastructure ecosystem, as it is the case uh, for research infrastructures. So uh, again, here uh, we will uh, 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 we will uh, define together with the member states uh, priority areas where technology infrastructure can really uh, become an important reference for the uh, research community and the industrial community in particular. Uh, actually, uh, technology infrastructure and the research infrastructure are already complementary. And many of the topics that we will implement in particular in destination three uh, allows will allow technology infrastructure to be involved because in the provision of services, in the definition of broad portfolios of services, uh, the fact of addressing the high TRLs may require uh, the involvement of uh, uh, technology infrastructures as well. And they are, uh, of course, uh, eligible uh, participants in, in, in these kind of activities. And in terms of funding, as I said, we do not expect to have specific activities in the research infrastructure program funding technology infrastructure. So we will take care of the governance and we will work with uh, the clusters and with other parts of, uh, of the framework program to make sure that technology infrastructure can, uh, can really uh, provide uh, uh, services uh, to, in particular, the industrial communities. With this, I uh, finish and uh, uh, open, uh, remain uh, for, for, I mean, over to, to, to the moderator, actually. Thank you. And thank you so much, Roberta. Uh, this was indeed very useful. And of course, we appreciate being the first to be publicly informed about all the content or, and opportunities. So we will now open up for questions. Uh, as said in the beginning, please write your name and affiliation in the Q&A box. And in turn, we will hand over the word to you. Your microphone will be unmuted and you can ask your questions. Uh, but I, I, I think I, the, there are two very uh, sort of question for clarification, I will do myself at the beginning. In one of your slides, it said that uh, the budget was 4 million euros. I guess it's, uh, uh, no, 2.4 million, it's 2.4 billion. Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, <laughs> the, the, the other one is related to the COVID-19 uh, action and without a normal call. Could you just elaborate and clarify how you use uh, other actions and, and the procedure in evaluation, et cetera. I think that's uh, important. Thank you. Yes. Yes, indeed, it was 2.4 billion. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I prepared the slides late in the evening. So, sorry, it's 2.4 billion. Uh, concerning the COVID-19 uh, uh, topics, uh, actually, uh, this is quite a, a, an exceptional situation because we are publishing topics without having the legal basis, which is the framework program adopted. And this is possible on the basis of, I mean, this is, uh, you know, some technicalities of, of uh, Article 195 of the 
financial regulation. Now, what does it mean? It means uh, that we, we will have uh, uh, the topic published as expression of interest. And on the and expression of interest means that we expect to receive normal proposals as if it was uh, you know, a normal proposal prepared to, uh, to, to address one or the other topic published normally, as we do normally. Uh, now, the, 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 the difference for us uh, and also for the uh, applicants uh, is that uh, the call will remain open only probably one month. So it is important, uh, you know, to start thinking uh, to prepare the proposal already in advance. And actually, we probably expect to close the call uh, in May, June. It depends when it will be published. Uh, we have still uh, to take care of uh, some uh, internal procedures like an inter-service consultation that will be carried out uh, in, uh, in the next few days. And then uh, the expression of interest uh, uh, will be published. So there is only, you know, what the main difference is in the terminology. Instead of saying topics and call, we say expression of interest. Proposals will be prepared as it is the case for the normal topics through our uh, participant portal. And the evaluation will be carried out as we do normally on the basis of the evaluation criteria, three main criteria, excellence, impact, and, and implementation uh, with external experts. So there are no, let's say for the beneficiaries, there are no big, uh, let's say changes if not the timing and uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, this is published outside, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, normal procedures. Thank you, uh, Roberta. And next uh, question is from Nils Röcke. So we, uh, we can open the microphone uh, for Nils. Please, Nils. We are just, I see that he's still muted. Uh, if Sinova, back of his. Okay, no, now. Nils. Yes, now you're online. Uh, okay, thank you. And thank you very much for an excellent presentation, uh, Mrs. Sobby. Um, I wondered about the, um, the open innovation uh, test beds and how this is linked. You alluded to that uh, on some of your last slides. And uh, we know there are activities in this space in the nanomaterials and technology. And I wondered if there are any, what kind of activities or initiatives are there to establish uh, more of these and are these under the Horizon Europe kind of envelope and calls? Yes, uh, I mean, this is foreseen as it was the case in the past. Uh, the, uh, NMP program will uh, probably continue uh, implementing these activities. Um, they are exactly uh, like us, uh, discussing with the member states. I'm not uh, uh, aware of uh, you know, specific topics because this is not my, let's say, under my remit for the time being. Uh, but uh, they will. They are expected to continue doing those kind of publishing those kind of topics, but not only NMP, it seems that other programs will mm -hmm. take up uh, the approach. For example, the energy program is also working in this direction. Uh, uh, again, I mean, I, I, I'm not working in, in, in these uh, areas, uh, so I don't know where the discussions with the member states uh, uh, stand at this moment. Uh, but uh, they are expected to implement those kind of topics. Okay, thank you, because this was in the space, uh, the hydrogen space, and uh, has been discussed under the European Clean Hydrogen uh, Alliance. Uh, also the need for research infrastructures and technology infrastructures, and then the open uh, innovation test beds has been mentioned. So I was kind of wondering how we could establish that, and we'll have a meeting on that uh, tomorrow to see how this can be addressed in the best way. But thank you. 
Very good. We have a number of questions. And uh, first, Rahel Bielan from Swissco, and after that, Florin Stanika uh, from University of Bucharest. So, Rahel, uh, your microphone will be opened. Yeah, you're on there. Uh, okay, now I'm on there. Thank you, thank you, Tor, and thank you, Roberta, for a very interesting presentation. So my question was actually tying into what you've already explained before um, the two uh, special calls for COVID-19. So I was wondering a bit more on the timing. You said the calls will close in uh, May or June, so when you have them only open for one month. How do you see the rest of the timing? So how soon will grant agreements for these projects then be signed? Because I expect you need fast action to, uh, to work uh, during the pandemic still. Yes, indeed. Uh, um, um, the call are expected to be published uh, I mean, as soon as possible. So probably early April. Uh, we uh, expect to keep the call open one month uh, carry out the evaluation because actually we are not expecting uh, many, many calls, many, many proposals, of course, uh, because it's uh, two topics, very, very focused. Uh, and uh, for both topics, uh, we do expect a high level of integration be between uh, and among relevant infrastructures. So we don't expect uh, a huge amount of, of proposals, which means that the evaluation will not take uh, a lot of time, and we can quickly open the uh, grant agreement uh, preparation phase. Um, I mean, uh, we do expect in the next, uh, I mean, uh, four to six months to have the contract signed for these activities. And in parallel to what we do in the research infrastructure, there are several topics to which will be implemented along the same lines by the ELF. Uh, program because of course we are the two programs uh, most uh, let's say uh, in the front line let's say in relation to uh, this emergency so uh, if there is an interest in in uh, in these uh, you know in the uh, COVID-19 related activities be aware that also the health program is launching uh, uh, expression of interests Good, thank you. I, I just have to say before we continue on the list, I said wrongly that uh, you don't have to do anything to unmute uh, your microphone. The back office will enable you to unmute and you have to unmute yourself. So first is uh, Florin uh, and after that uh, sorry, is uh, Stina Pestmo from NTNU. Florin, please. I don't hear or see uh, Florin. Okay, uh, maybe we then continue till to uh, Sina Pesmo from NTNU, please. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead, Sina. push the unmuting. Yes, oh, you're on. Uh, hi, so uh, thank you for a very interesting introduction. Um, I was wondering uh, if um, I can start my window, if you could say something about uh, the transition to Horizon Europe for the research infrastructures and uh, in particular, uh, if it's expected uh, that the research infrastructures uh, participate more into Pillar 2 and serving the missions to a larger extent than compared to um, Horizon 2020. Uh, yes, um, actually this is something that we have been discussed with uh, extensively with the member states, uh, the synergies between the different pillars. Research infrastructures as enabler 
uh, of, uh, of research and innovation, of course, can play uh, an important role in the different uh, pillars and in the missions. And uh, actually, from the Commission side, of course, I mean, uh, we have done our best uh, to work together with uh, with our colleagues in the different uh, in the different sectors and we have also discussed with the member states their role uh, in the different thematic configurations of, of the committees uh, to make sure that the research infrastructure are properly uh, referred to whenever they are relevant uh, so many i mean many uh, i mean uh, missions uh, and and uh, and clusters have taken these on board. Probably there is still uh, work to be done from our side, but also from the member state side to make sure that research infrastructure can really contribute. Uh, the different programs at the level of the different other programs, not research infrastructure, the provision of access is one of the eligible costs because research infrastructure can play a double role as a research organization carrying out research so they can participate as you know, research organization in the different topics across the whole Horizon Euro program. But then there is this specificity of access provision and access provision, there is a strong focus in our program, of course, because I mean, this is our remit, but it is also possible for uh, the other programs to support access provision because this is also an eligible cost uh, in, uh, in the different clusters. So whenever there are activities that can be relevant for carrying out, re for carrying out uh, research in one or the other uh, sector or, or program, research infrastructure can be there on top of what we do in our program. Okay. Thank you, Roberta. I see that time is running out. We still have a number of questions. I wonder if it would be okay for you, Roberta, if we collect the questions and, and send it to you and you can see if it's possible for you to answer later on. Uh, from my side, uh, thank you so much for uh, attending and, and presenting all this valuable information uh, for us, Roberta. Uh, and also a big thank you to the back office, Emilia and Sineuve from NTNU, uh, and also the participants. I wonder if Massimo, would you have some final words before we end uh, the, this session? Over to you, Massimo. I'm coming. Uh, yes, I'm appearing again because I was just in the background not to, to bother the moderator. Uh, so also from my side, Roberta, very, very thank you, especially also for allowing uh, one hour with Europe to have the first uh, official uh, insight on the on the next uh, uh, research infrastructure work program. And uh, of course, we look forward to further collaborate with you during the program and uh, with our ideas and projects uh, for the future as NTNU, of course. So thanks again for your participation and thanks to all the people which uh, have stayed until now with us and uh, looking forward for the next edition of One Hour with Europe with uh, a new guest from the European Commission. Thank you very much and congratulations for this very, very nice format. Thank you and feedback. see you all later.